In physics, Ginzburg Landau theory, often called Landau Ginzburg theory, named after Vitaly Lazarevich Ginzburg and Lev Landau, is a mathematical physical theory used to describe superconductivity. In its initial form, it was postulated as a phenomenological model which could describe type 1 superconductors without examining their microscopic properties. Later, a version of Ginzburg Landau theory was derived from the Bardeen Cooper Schrieffer microscopic theory by Lev Gorkov, thus showing that it also appears in some limit of microscopic theory and giving microscopic interpretation of all its parameters. Introduction Based on Landau's previously established theory of second-order phase transitions, Ginzburg and Landau argued that the free energy, F, of a superconductor near the superconducting transition can be expressed in terms of a complex order parameter field, ψ, which is non-zero below a phase transition into a superconducting state and is related to the density of the superconducting component, although no direct interpretation of this parameter was given in the original paper. Assuming smallness of ψ, and smallness of its gradients, the free energy has the form of a field theory. F equals F n plus alpha ψ 2 plus beta 2 ψ 4 plus 1 2 m minus i minus 2 e a psi 2 plus b 2 2 mu 0 Display style f equals f underscore n plus alpha psi carrot two plus frac beta two psi carrot four plus frac one two meters left left i h b a r nabla two e math b f a right psi right carrot two plus frac math b f b carrot two two mu underscore zero where f n is the free energy in the normal phase, alpha and beta in the initial argument were treated as phenomenological parameters, m is an effective mass, e is the charge of an electron, a is the magnetic vector potential, and b equals times a display style math bf b equals nabla times math bf a is the magnetic field. By minimizing the free energy with respect to variations in the order parameter and the vector potential, one arrives at the Ginzburg-Landau equations: alpha psi plus beta psi two psi plus one two m minus i minus Two E A two psi equals zero Display style alpha psi plus beta psi carrot two psi plus frac one two meters left I H B A R Nabla two E Math BF a right carrot two psi equals zero times B equals mu zero J J equals two E M re psi minus I minus two E A psi Display style nabla times math bf b equals mu underscore zero math bf j math bf j equals frac two e m operator name re left psi carrot asterisk left i h b a r nabla two e math bf a right psi right where j denotes the dissipation less electric current density and re the real part. The first equation which bears some similarities to the time-independent Schrödinger equation, but is principally different due to a nonlinear term, determines the order parameter, ψ. The second equation then provides the superconducting current. 
Topic simple interpretation Consider a homogeneous superconductor where there is no superconducting current and the equation for psi simplifies to alpha psi plus beta psi 2 psi equals 0 Display style alpha psi plus beta psi caret 2 psi equals 0 This equation has a trivial solution psi equals 0 this corresponds to the normal state of the superconductor, that is for temperatures above the superconducting transition temperature, T greater than Tc. Below the superconducting transition temperature, the above equation is expected to have a non-trivial solution that is psi does not equal zero. Under this assumption the equation above can be rearranged into, psi, 2 equals minus alpha beta, display style, psi, caret 2 equals frac alpha beta, when the right-hand side of this equation is positive, there is a non-zero solution for psi remember that the magnitude of a complex number can be positive or zero. This can be achieved by assuming the following temperature dependence of alpha, alpha t equals alpha 0 t minus t c with alpha 0, beta greater than 0, above the superconducting transition temperature, t greater than t c, the expression alpha t, beta is positive and the right-hand side of the equation above is negative. The magnitude of a complex number must be a non-negative number, so only psi equals 0 solves the Ginzburg-Landau equation. Below the superconducting transition temperature, T. Furthermore, psi 2 equals minus alpha 0 T minus T C beta. Display style psi caret 2 equals frac alpha underscore 0 T T underscore C beta. That is psi approaches zero as T gets closer to Tc from below. Such a behavior is typical for a second-order phase transition. In Ginzburg-Landau theory the electrons that contribute to superconductivity were proposed to form a superfluid. In this interpretation, psi, 2 indicates the fraction of electrons that have condensed into a superfluid. Topic coherence length and penetration depth The Ginzburg-Landau equations predicted two new characteristic lengths in a superconductor which was termed coherence length, xi. For T, Tc normal phase, it is given by xi equals 2 2 m, alpha, display style, xi equals sqrt, frac, hbar carrot 2 2 m, alpha, while for T xi equals 2 4 m, alpha. Display style she equals sqrt frac hbar carrot two four meters alpha. It sets the exponential law according to which small perturbations of density of superconducting electrons recover their equilibrium value psi zero. Thus, this theory characterized all superconductors by two length scales. The second one is the penetration depth lambda. It was previously introduced by the London brothers in their London theory. Expressed in terms of the parameters of Ginzburg-Landau model, it is lambda equals m four mu zero e two psi zero two display style lambda equals sqrt frac m four mu underscore zero e caret two psi underscore zero caret two where psi zero is the equilibrium value of the order parameter in the absence of an electromagnetic field. The penetration depth sets the exponential law according to which an external magnetic field decays inside the superconductor. The original idea on the parameter k belongs to Landau. The ratio kappa equals lambda, she is presently known as the Ginzburg-Landau parameter. It has been proposed by Landau that type 1 superconductors are those with O1, square root 2. Equals. Topic. Fluctuations in the Ginzburg-Landau model. Equals. Taking into account fluctuations. For type II superconductors, the phase transition from the normal state is of second order, as demonstrated by Dasgupta and Halperin. While for type I superconductors it is of first order, as demonstrated by Halperin, Lubinsky and Ma. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Classification of superconductors based on Ginzburg-Landau theory. 
In the original paper Ginzburg and Landau observed the existence of two types of superconductors depending on the energy of the interface between the normal and superconducting states, the Meissner state breaks down when the applied magnetic field is too large. Superconductors can be divided into two classes according to how this breakdown occurs. In type 1 superconductors, superconductivity is abruptly destroyed when the strength of the applied field rises above a critical value Hc. Depending on the geometry of the sample, one may obtain an intermediate state consisting of a baroque pattern of regions of normal material carrying a magnetic field mixed with regions of superconducting material containing no field. In type II superconductors, raising the applied field past a critical value Hc1 leads to a mixed state also known as the vortex state in which an increasing amount of magnetic flux penetrates the material, but there remains no resistance to the flow of electric current as long as the current is not too large. At a second critical field strength Hc2, superconductivity is destroyed. The mixed state is actually caused by vortices in the electronic superfluid, sometimes called fluxons because the flux carried by these vortices is quantized. Most pure elemental superconductors, except niobium and carbon nanotubes, are type 1, while almost all impure and compound superconductors are type 2. The most important finding from Ginzburg-Landau theory was made by Alexei Abrikasov in 1957. He used Ginzburg-Landau theory to explain experiments on superconducting alloys and thin films. He found that in a type II superconductor in a high magnetic field, the field penetrates in a triangular lattice of quantized tubes of flux vortices. <laughs> Landau-Ginzburg theories in string theory In particle physics, any quantum field theory with a unique classical vacuum state and a potential energy with a degenerate critical point is called a Landau-Ginzburg theory. The generalization to n topic <laughs> two two supersymmetric theories in two spacetime dimensions was proposed by Kumrun VAFA and Nicholas Warner in the November 1988 article Catastrophes and the Classification of Conformal Theories. In this generalization, one imposes that the superpotential possess a degenerate critical point. The same month, together with Brian Green, they argued that these theories are related by a renormalization group flow to sigma models on Calabi Yau manifolds in the paper Calabi Yau manifolds and renormalization group flows. In his 1993 paper Phases of N. Two theories in two dimensions, Edward Witten argued that landau ginzburg theories and sigma models on Calabi-Yau manifolds are different phases of the same theory. A construction of such a duality was given by relating the gromov witten theory of Calabi-Yau orbifolds to FJRW theory and analogous landau ginzburg FJRW theory in the Witten equation, mirror symmetry and quantum singularity theory. Witten's sigma models were later used to describe the low-energy dynamics of four-dimensional gauge theories with monopoles as well as brain constructions. Gyoto, Gukov and Cyberg 2013 See also.